Oh, hi YouTube, how's it going? All right, well for this video, we're gonna have a look at glider engines. In particular, the sustainer or turbo engine that I've got in my own glider here, which is a Ventus CT. The T stands for turbo. So I thought we'd have a look at how the engine works, how to actually operate it, what it looks like, what it can do, and also we'll have a look at what it's like to land with the engine out. So here's what the engine looks like. As you can see, it's got a five-bladed prop. The motor itself is two-stroke, so it takes a mix of petrol and oil. And as you can see, when it folds away into the engine bay there, blades just fold up nicely. Let's have a look at the control panel. So it's this little uh, round instrument here. There's only a few buttons on it. One is this one here, which is for retracting the engine or extending the engine. There's a light here to show that the pylon has extended fully. There's a battery test button here. I can push that to see the state of the battery. One green light is good. If it has an orange or red light, it means the battery voltage is getting too low. RPM, so that will tell us if we're over speeding, which will make the blades spin too fast. So we've got to make sure that we're not going uh, over speeding the engine. Finally, we've got the ignition switch. So on the ground, of course, we leave that off. That way, if I if anyone spins the blades around manually, there's no chance of the motor actually starting. If the ignition is on, then it's live and ready to actually start. All right, well, I'm gonna try something a bit different uh, for landing today. I'm gonna get my engine out and pretend it doesn't start. It'll be just like having the brakes out a little bit. All right, I'm going to extend the engine. We're going to do a circuit just with uh, the engine open. Creating drag. So I estimate it's like having that brakes out about a third. So definitely a bit of drag, but it shouldn't be too bad. pretty good. As you can see that worked happily, no great drama and yeah I still had to use a little bit of brake uh, so it's not too bad. 
certainly is like having the brake out a little bit. So the process of starting the engine, the procedure is turn the fuel on, extend the engine, turn the ignition on, and normally you can do those both at the same time because the ignition won't be on and active until the pylon is locked up into its upright position. Once you've got the pylon up, the ignition on, and the fuel on, you can do a dive. Now the way this starts, it doesn't have a starter on the engine at all. The way you need to start it is to actually dive, build up airflow over the blades, which makes them spin. We pull the decompression handle and then release it. And you can see if I pull the handle, that's pulling those two valves and away the engine will start. So it's quite similar to hill starting a car where you push it down a hill and, and let the clutch go. So what things can go wrong? So we always have to be ready to land in a field or a paddock. We never want to rely solely on the engine. It could not start for many reasons. For example, you could forget to put the fuel on or maybe that little switch that detects that the pylon is up isn't working and breaks. That means the ignition will never come on and it will never start. So you can't rely on the engine. Always have a suitable landing underneath you. And that's why I wanted to test out today landing with the engine out. So if this happens in real life, the engine doesn't start, I'm over a field, I know what the approach and the landing will be like. Common questions. One, can I take off with this engine? The answer is no mainly because I need to dive start to get it started and that's a bit hard to do when you're sitting on the ground. Secondly, there's no throttle, so it's full power or nothing. Thirdly, you would need some external to actually start it for you because you'll be sitting in the cockpit about to take off. So it can be done. I know the engine did come with a pull cord so you can pull start it on the ground if you wanted to, uh, which I'm guessing would be mainly for testing. It's also just not quite powerful enough to do a takeoff. So maybe if you had a paved runway, nice and long, you could do it and it would work. And once you're in the air, it would be just like uh, normal. But I haven't tried it and probably won't on a grass runway. So there are gliders that can self-launch. They normally have a throttle, a slightly bigger engine that's a bit more powerful. And of course that costs a bit more money and they're more complicated to maintain. So a turbo like this is a nice simple option. That's probably a bit cheaper, easy to look after, but you still need a tow plane or a winch to get you in the air to start with. Now the question we often get is, isn't it cheating? What happens in a contest if you use your engine? And the answer is, all our loggers that record our flight our GPS location also have an engine noise detection system on it. If you use an engine on a task, halfway around the task for example, it's almost exactly the same as landing in a paddock in that same spot. All right, well I hope you've enjoyed that little look at glider sustainer engines or turbos. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our online store. We've got t-shirts and hoodies available and it's a great way to support the channel. Help us make more videos in the future with your support.